Evening everybody, Todd Metal at Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Especially after the kind of night that we saw last night. Big time derecho went through the Midwest here. We had tornadoes in even areas like Chicago and also Des Moines. Uh, Des Moines actually had a pretty big tornado there as well. We also had over 700 damaging wind reports alone yesterday. Also, it's been a pretty big day today. There was an enhanced risk issued over towards the Northeast. Over 200 wind reports and counting right now. And then we also still have a couple other areas where there's still weather ongoing. So over towards uh, central Nebraska, that's a point of interest. Over towards uh, the plains, right in here between the Texas, Oklahoma panhandles, southwestern Kansas, severe thunderstorm watch ongoing right now. Warnings ongoing as well. And then of course, there's still a little bit of weather going on around the mid-Atlantic and the northeast, although that has slowed ever so slightly. But we still have a couple more days of severe weather possible here and thankfully we are seeing a little bit of a downtrend with that we do still have the start for damaging winds and hail tomorrow across the northeast and mid-atlantic here so anywhere from springfield mass all the way up even into southern parts of new hampshire and vermont all the way back down towards richmond virginia and areas in between which includes philly new york city baltimore washington dc slight risk for damaging winds hail threat is going to remain pretty low unless you're out towards the western high plains here where we have potential for maybe a little bit of larger hail possible. Same thing with the wind threat there as well. So we go towards J3, threat drops off even more. At the moment, it is a marginal risk. We can only hope that it stays that way. We've actually had a streak of slight risk for I don't even know how long at this point now, but maybe we can finally catch a real break here over towards the western high plains again. Setup's been pretty conducive over there, and that's going to continue to be the case, but we are starting to see some downtrends there. As we go through days four through five, we still have uh, predictability too low. This basically is meaning that the potential for severe storms exist, and there is not much agreement or confidence amongst the models to issue an area of interest that's with it that is uh, highlighting 15% probability or higher of severe weather right now so not a lot of confidence in the long term that's good news but still the predictability too low kind of tells you hey you still need to pay attention now what we want to see is what we start seeing on day six seven and eight here where the potential for severe weather is too low there's an agreement amongst most models that the potential for severe weather I wouldn't say it doesn't exist but the potential for severe weather is very low and there's not much confidence to be had with the parameters that are currently being shown on the models here. So seeing that is definitely a good sign. It's the first time I've seen this in a while here, especially for this stretch of days here. So hopefully this remains and we can get a break with severe weather. Honestly, we've been, I feel like we've been honestly nonstop since really the beginning since we really began over towards like uh I'd say it was like maybe mid-February truthfully but as we look at the current weather pattern right now looking at the jet stream in particular at the upper levels like I said we, we still have a little bit of a ways to go here we are seeing this ridge build off to the southwest here and with that on the downslope of that there's always still that chance for some shower and storm activity some storms here and there could be severe but my confidence in that isn't very high at the moment this is that friday setup here that we were talking about a little bit earlier and then we see a little uh, disturbance over here towards the southeast now what i want you to pay attention to is where this ridge starts to move and how it builds this ridge starts to really take over at this point and this kind of kicks the jet stream much further off to the north here and as a result of that I do think this will help lessen the severe weather threat just a little bit more. And this is where we start to get those potential too low areas in the mix here. Do I still think we could get showers and storms right now over towards, let's say maybe the Ohio Valley Southeast? Yeah. Do I think that some of those could potentially go severe? It's always possible. It's summertime. Usually with summertime, you, have a, you can get a decent amount of instability, but it takes a lot more than that to just create severe weather. But in any case though, we do have to watch for these little areas here and there. We get these sneaky little um, areas of lower pressure that could still trigger severe storms. But like I said, the probability of this isn't going to really aid any sort of 
major marquee setups like we had yesterday, for example. Now, as we go further and further along here, we get this big area of low pressure over here towards Canada that, that eventually kind of breaks the pattern here. So we can draw to, as we uh, draw towards the end of the month. And then eventually, I do think we'll start to see some more notable setups maybe coming into play to close out the month of July. And we can even start to get a look at what the first day of August is going to be like. With this, there are some unknowns with this obviously being 16 days out. But if this look comes back into play, we'll probably start to see a slight increase in severe weather back over towards the Western High Plains and towards the Northern Plains as well. But like I said, 16 days out, a lot can change with this. So take this with a grain of salt. Now, if we look at another parameter for severe weather here, although this factor does help with all forms of severe weather, somewhat irrelevant for tornadoes right now. And when I say irrelevant, I'm using that term loosely. It's always relevant for tornadoes. But usually when you look at a tornado threat, you want the surface temperatures to be closer to the dew points. Obviously, especially if you're looking towards the Midwest, we are nowhere near 60 degrees. And this is what I mean by irrelevant. So while the tornado threat isn't going to be impressive during any of these upcoming days where severe weather is possible, I always have to watch out. I also think with the jet stream not being a huge factor across this part of the U.S. here, I also think that things are going to stay pretty, uh, stay pretty, uh, pretty mild, pretty uh, limited, so to speak. So we continue to go forward here. And we're really at this point kind of looking at this more to see what we're going to be dealing with in regards to how the temperature feels. It definitely still is going to be pretty muggy across the board, anywhere east of the Rockies, unfortunately. So try to avoid uh, strenuous activity outside. Don't be outside for extended periods of time, of course, as we already know. And then, well, you can help it. Just don't be outside at all. <laughs> but in any case, though, widespread 60 70 degree dew points here so if we could get a good lifting mechanism some decent shear we'll probably have the instability that we would need for storms especially as we go towards the end of the month where that pattern starts to change here you can see the influx of moisture even the 70 degree dew points are making their way into canada so ample moisture is available that's never been a problem you can even look at this point right here this is looking at the evening of the 28th here we have some ridiculous ridiculous dew points these are actually i think some of the highest dew points i've seen this year this far north 80 plus degree dew points now obviously this is the only model that i can look at that goes out to this range so i'm taking that with a grain of salt but still just seeing readings like that is absolutely insane to me and all i got to say to that is anyone that's over towards this region regardless of whether you get severe weather or not those days just just make sure you're just monitoring your body because sheesh i've been in 70 degree dew points my job is as a landscaper during the day so i could tell you right now if you're outside in that just make sure that you are drink that you have plenty of water even the night before that's really the best way to combat something like that truthfully uh pickle juice um salt pills salt water just something to help keep that Keep the uh, salt in your body, electrolytes, of course, as well. Anyway, enough of talking about that. Let's also take a look at the temperatures here. Had a little light malfunction here. I, had to throw, I threw my hat at my uh, Echo Dot. But in any case, though, looking at the temperatures, we already kind of spoiled it just from looking at the uh, dew point map here. It's going to be hot across the board here, no matter where you look, whether you're in the southeast, the uh, Midwest here, even up towards the northwest, too. It's going to be pretty hot across the board. The northeast really seems like the only fair area here. And then also maybe over towards the Great Lakes. We're a little bit below average. Definitely must be nice. I'm a little bit jealous if I'm being honest myself. But as we continue to go forward here, eventually they even start to get into the mix with the heat here. We start to see some 80s coming into play here. Some 90s. Also, the threat for summertime showers and storms as i was explaining before still remains over a large part of the eastern half of the u.s especially towards let's say areas like the southeast over towards the tennessee valley here maybe even the ohio valley as well and regardless of the time of year or and regardless of what time 
timing we're looking at on the models here you can still see it highlighted by these little patches right here those are where you see those summertime storms kind of come in you can still see that gulf of mexico moisture flow coming in that little onshore breeze pushing that moisture on moisture along here and with the sun heating the atmosphere a little bit it's not going to really take much to get storms to fire here we're in the right like this is the right environment if you're looking for storms right now eventually as we go further along here you can actually see some really big storms start to take shape here on the last day of the month so i do have my i do have my thoughts as to where there could still be severe weather but like i said looking as far out as we are looking especially towards this point or at the end of, at the uh, end of the model run here i don't have a lot of confidence in that at the moment and well rightfully so 16 days is a lot of time these models update every six hours and they don't always look the same after the next run so that being said like i said take some of this with a grain of salt especially once we get past i would say 72 hours in particular i usually have more confidence in the three-day runs usually a lot more model data is available the further out i go the less confidence i have sounds fair about it, i would say right but in any case though Let's go ahead and take a look now at what the weather pattern is looking like in regards to precipitation here. So, like I said, still have an active few days ahead here. I don't think that they're going to be anything like what we had yesterday or even today, but we could still see some severe weather. As time goes on here, there is going to be a point where we get a little bit of a slowdown. I still think we'll see our fair share of shower and storm activity. You can even see that here towards the southeast, even towards the southwest, we have a little bit of that monsoonal flow coming into play here, which is a welcome sight for these guys. These guys, some of these guys over here have been waiting for rain for a while, and it's good to see them finally get a little bit of the action here. But as time goes on here, eventually we are going to reach a point where we start to see the return of more potentially organized severe weather. During the summertime, it's a little bit of a wild card. You can you can point out severe weather threats during the summer but it's a little bit tricky it can be kind of a game of inches so to speak it's really hard to describe what summertime storm setups are like for me or at least from my perspective i know how to point them out but it's a little weird but as you can see here as we get towards the end of the month here's that line of storms i was talking about over towards the dakotas here i'm kind of interested to see how that pans out and then, of course, we still have our setup over here towards the southeast for those summertime popcorn thunderstorms. See the same thing going on over here towards Florida. And then even as we head into the first of next month here, we still see a little bit of action, especially over towards the southeast. The wild card in all of this right now is the tropics, which have been quiet, but we'll be doing a video on that soon to see if it will remain that way. But that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You did, you know what to do. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and obliterate that share button. Till next time, though, it's been Tyler Metal Weatherman. You guys take care and have a good night.